89.7 KFJC. I'm Cousin Mary. You are listening to Stream of Consciousness. We have Nuclear Death Wish here. We're going to talk with them, but first let me catch you up. I was just playing from KLV, Finnish metal band, their album Nin Musta Unma out on Emissary Records. Thanks a lot to Nuclear Death Wish. I hope you caught the audio Uh, Unfortunately, our video wasn't working, which is a shame, but uh, very intense, very intense. I'd like to welcome Cactus, Doug, and Jay here for uh, a little talk about noise. Thanks for having us. Oh, you bet. You know, um, I would say from personal experience, the first time I went to a noise show, I felt really self-conscious. I thought, what am I doing here? And I got (laughs) there, and it was interesting. I enjoyed it. I was really struck by the fact that people were very respectful with each other and very supportive, which I see in surf bands or other kinds of bands. So it, it really, uh, really was uh, terrific. And I would advise, I oftentimes get calls from listeners who say, I like all the music you play, but I just don't get that noise stuff. So <laughs> I'm hoping they're listening now and we can talk a little I think bit. music's more like hard bop. Yeah, noise. exactly. Yeah. We're, we're more hard in bop. with the uh, Charlie Parker, <laughs> Django Reinhardt. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good that you had a good experience. I think it's true that noise tends to freak people out initially, and especially if you don't see it live, it's kind of hard to understand if you're just listening to a noise recording. But um, some people say we're black metal. Other people say that we're noise. So we're kind of in that netherland between various kinds of genres anyway. So, I mean, some people put us as free jazz because we play, you know, kind of improvised uh, sound. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that. Now, when you went into the pit just now, did you know what you were going to play? Yes and no. Uh, yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> yeah, you have to get a little closer to the microphone. I'm trying. I'm, I'm worried there's other germs <laughs> on here. Oh, well, that's entirely possible. We'll, we'll give you a course of antibiotics, okay. you know, all visitors to KFJ. When we're leaving, we go through the little shower section. <laughs> but uh, we have a general idea of what's going to happen, but we don't plan anything out beyond that. We don't like to do sound checks, as uh, your audio engineer found in. Um, You know, generally, our shows are about five or ten minutes long before either the equipment breaks or the crowd comes crashing into us or whatever. So it's fairly self-limiting, but it's it's totally improvised. And um, Jay, I think because of his drumming style, tends to bring the the black metal kind of affectation. So that's how we get the black metal thing, I think, is from Jay's drumming. And he makes us go a little longer. If Jay wasn't drumming, it'd probably be like a minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think if Doug and I were left to our own de- devices, we'd probably wreck the thing in about 30 seconds, and that would be <laughs> yeah. the end of our show. So, so Jay, were, uh, have you uh, worked in black metal bands? or? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, I'm playing in one tonight at the uh, Bay Area 51 called Orihima. Shameless Orihima. self-promotion. <laughs> this is, myself this here. is what we can't take about Jay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. But yeah, you should go see Orihima tonight. They're really great. What's yeah. the name of the band? Orihima. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Orihima. Orihima. Uh, yes. And yeah. they're uh, playing at uh, Bay Area 51, yeah, great with, noise uh, venue. With uh, Zeke Sheck and Chablis and other bands' names I can't say yes, on the air. Yes, we can't say on the air, but it should oh, be yeah. a great show. Yeah, the concert <laughs> outlook is like that. It's like, okay, I read ahead to, so I know what I uh, what you, <laughs> you can say and what you can't say. Yeah. Now, um, Scythoth, our black metal mm-hmm. uh, DJ here at KFJC. Very well known in San Francisco, of course. Yeah, he uh, always <laughs> tells me that the really fast drum is signature black metal would you would you say that mm, yeah black metal death metal whatever some free jazz drummers are incredibly fast even faster than some metal drummers so yeah and a lot of black metal has very slow plotting like if you listen to burzum or some yeah, of that stuff yeah. it's very slow so it's all over the place but jay definitely brings the power and uh, he's a, a mammoth drummer drummer so he he drives the nuclear death wish sound that's for sure yeah well, thank you yeah <laughs> Now, um, I think some of you have been here at KFJC before, probably. Yes. Uh, Everyone but me. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doug's the newbie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah now, um, what what bands, w- would that have been on Nosmo King's show? Or? Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. I was with uh, my other band, Etric, at that time. We oh, were right. here twice. And yeah, with both of those were Nosmo King shows. Mm-hmm. And I played here a couple times with Hydrogen Pellets, which is my tape loop band with Elvis Johnson, and also with Leavenworth, which is my whatever kind of noisy band with uh, Elvis on drums. That's a weird duo that I play in as well. Now, I kind of remember you were here for the 24 Hours of Life drum. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I think um, that was Hydrogen Pellets, I believe. Yeah. 
I thought that was an absolutely incredible day. I was so glad that I've been able to stop by. I mean, it, 24 hours of bands cycling in and out was... It was great. I mean, we were only here for about two hours of it, but the performances we saw just before us and just after were pretty mind-blowing, so we were very honored uh, to sit in on that little session. So, And our little 15-minute set went pretty well, but uh, we were really blown away by uh, the folks before and after us, and that was a really fun show. Yeah, I thought so, too. Now, um, tell me about your music backgrounds. What um, how did you start music? What kind of bands have you been in? And how did how did you arrive at doing noise? <laughs> Doug, you want to tackle that one? <laughs> uh, I'm primarily an organ player and uh, got into free music because I was sick of learning songs. <laughs> and uh, somehow free music and noise, at least in uh, the Bay Area, seem to connect. You know, I mean, we play weird shows where it's like there's a jazz band, a noise band, and us. Uh, and there'll be like a performance act, you know, pouring milk all over the stage. Or something. <laughs> That's um, right. That has happened. I'd block that one out. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I think it's just a matter of the freedom. You know, there's less uh, judgment. You know, with noise, you go to uh, a pop show or something, and people are very judgmental, expecting a certain you know thing. Uh, I think you go to a noise show, you don't expect anything. You just go for the unexpected. I think it is true, too, that the San Francisco-Oakland noise scene is totally diverse in terms of you have a lot of people coming out of Mills College that play a more traditional style of Snooty. improv jazz, <laughs> and then you have a lot of other people that are just straight noise musicians, and then a lot of people have come out of like rock bands and have come into noise that way. So I think when you rub up against all these musicians in San Francisco and Oakland who are doing really, really far out stuff, it tends to you know make you want to push your envelope and realize how tame the music you've been playing has been. Like, I've been playing music now for longer than I want to admit, but basically when i started i was playing like a ska band in high school and was playing like you know basically like specials covers and you know english beat covers and stuff and gradually i started getting you know a little bit more adventurous and finally when i moved out here to san francisco uh you know i pretty much ditched ditched most of my preconceived notions about you know what a band is all about and what making music is all about and once you sort of get infected with that free jazz free noise uh kind of a way of thinking you, it's pretty hard to go back to structured music at that point for sure yeah yeah jay what about you yeah what uh, yeah, um, what did you, you start out as? did you play uh, in pittsburgh i don't even know this story well i started out playing guitar uh, about 20 years ago or so after uh, nirvana yeah I'm, I'm a young one so uh -huh. <laughs> nirvana was a huge influence on my musical starts and then i branched out and started listening to some weird stuff especially first time i heard ornette coleman and uh captain beefheart Oh, well, rest in yes. peace. We just dedicated captain. our set to the yeah. great captain. But yeah. the, those two artists especially were huge influences that really changed my outlook on music. Mm. Yeah, but, yeah. Then I started playing drums and saxophone at the same time like nine years ago. Mm. Whatever. On a whim. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How about you, Doug? What did oh you you told us you played organ? Did you play yeah, jazz organ. organ or uh, church organ or jazz organ at first, and then it just became whatever organ? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So uh, another project, Wigwam. It's a little more of a heavy free jazz ensemble. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Kind of like Sun Ra with headphones on underwater. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah. Does Wigwam still play? Yeah, we've been on a little hiatus, but yeah. um, we're gonna play a show soon. I just don't have a date. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe um, that that might be fun to have you on one of our jazz shows, which yeah. uh, we do. We, yeah, I know you guys have the Wigwam record here, so definitely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I was very happy to see that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> good, good, yeah. Um, so do you practice? No, we're against practice. <laughs> it pretty much works against our whole principle and our whole impact. I mean, we don't even like doing sound checks, which sometimes sometimes gets us into little arguments with people who are running shows because they expect us to plug in and you know play for five minutes or so so they can get the levels right. And we don't like to do that. It totally diminishes the. Well, I'm trying to get these guys energy. to be charts, but you <laughs> yeah, know, exactly. I'm going to write it out ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. But no, we don't like to practice. And um, today was the first time we'd played together in like three months. Yeah, our last show was about uh, three months ago. And we have another one coming up in January, so that'll be the next time we'll sort of get together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First Church of the Buzzard. Yeah, that's going to be on January 13th, a Thursday night at Ch First Church of the Buzzard, and there's something like 10 bands going on. I saw the lineup, and it looks pretty mind-blowing, and uh, we're playing pretty late that night, but if you get there early, there's going to be a bunch of good bands. Most people know that Church of the Buzzard in Oakland is one of the best um, sort of noise warehouse venues. They're putting on a gigantic uh, New Year's Eve show as well, but we're playing on January 13th, a Thursday night, so if you want to show up. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I might do that. I might do that. I enjoyed my last trip. Uh, 
Oh yeah, you were venue. there. You were at that venue as well for yeah. the what was that international noise conference? That's yep. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, um, okay. Um, what what other kind of music do you listen to? Mm, everything. I mean, all of us have really adventurous listening. So, I mean, I like polka. polka. I love polka. I collect polka 45s, uh, jazz, noise, black metal. We listen, all of us listen to a lot of black metal, of course. Um, punk, um, you know, just straight ahead bop jazz. Um, Jimmy McGriff. Yeah. Weird old country, anything oh, really. I love, I love Jimmy McGriff. I am a fanatical jazz organ fan. So, um, yeah. 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 How, how about you, Jay? Well, the same thing. You can't really add to that. What else is there? Cactus mentioned everything. Yeah, yeah. Except for, you know, I mean, we even listen to opera. I like classical and opera and, you know, just about anything. I mean, except with the exception of, like, new country or oh, pop yeah. music or <clears throat> KOIT type, type stuff, you know, mm-hmm. without bashing another station. Oh, yeah. If we only don't bash listeners. <laughs> Everyone makes fun of KOIT. They're used to it. Well, they have thick skin by now. Well, I think they have their listeners. and They're not listening to KFJZ, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably not, probably not today. Yeah, unless by When accident. I was mixing up uh, techno and, and metal and uh, <laughs> Mexican traditional. Um, so do you ever just, when you're relaxing, put on a noise recording? Oh, that's funny. We were talking about that because, you know, the old adage is it's more fun to play this kind of music than to listen to it. Yeah. But I think all of us listen to noise sometimes. But we have some friends that listen to nothing but extreme noise. And we were just joking about the fact that you have to be a masochist if you listen to nothing else but, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't keep up that kind of rigor. I think, uh, you know, when I get too too heavy into the Norwegian black metal, I, you know, put on a Slim Whitman 45 and that takes me out of that right away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're my, you're my kind of listener, I think. Um, yeah. I, um, I tend to play short noise things mixed in with other things. It's kind of mm-hmm. like the, um, yeah. you know, the salsa picante. And yeah. 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 <laughs> short, sharp shock. No, that makes sense. And I think even, you know, that's why noise shows are so good is because most of the acts only play like five or 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So even if you can't take it, you know, it's going to be over pretty quickly. <laughs> You know, so it makes it easier for you to endure it. You know, yeah. if you if you know they're going to play like an hour of that, then you're like, oh my god, I got to get out of here. But because they know, <laughs> Some of them you know, do, and that's unfortunate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know, there's a kind of aesthetic in San Francisco, Oakland, where the bands play really short. So, you know, we have no problem playing like five minutes. But other bands, when they come through from out of town, they set up and they're like, oh, we're going to play about an hour. We're like, what? What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Now, I had heard, I don't know if this is true, that the European bands tend to play longer sets have you noticed that or uh, is that maybe it's the time difference <laughs> exact time zones yeah that's right no i think that's I, definitely true and i think uh, the japanese noise bands especially play super long sets yeah. in my experience i mean you hear about these shows that like keiji haino the famous noise guitarist from japan will do he'll start at like 10 p.m and go until like six in the morning straight i yeah. mean it's like these long endurance kind of uh super i want to say masochistic but there's some element of that kind of S and M bondage kind of culture mixed in with their noise scene there, so they play longer. Do you think that's right, or am I just making that up? No, I think that's about right. Sounds legitimate. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you play? It seemed like your set was very physically intense. Um, it's physical music. I'm yeah, ready for definitely. a nap. Yeah, totally um, physical. Um, so, um, is that one reason you do a shorter set, or? Uh, yeah, that's probably a big reason. Yeah, for it. I think that coupled with the, I think it's just supposed to be short, though. Yeah, yeah so that yeah, and just the equipment ends up breaking. I'll always leave them wanting more. Yeah, always. well, that's definitely true. You don't want to overplay. You know, you're welcome, so to speak. You want to yeah. stop before people want you to stop. Yeah, but it is true. It's very physically uh, demanding to play uh, the kind of music we do, but it's fun. I mean, we get a huge rush out of it. When you're done, of course, your endorphins are totally coursing throughout your brain. So, well, that was My arm la- is still shaking. Yeah, the last <laughs> question I wanted to ask you is: What are you thinking about? What are you feeling when you're playing it? <laughs> it's usually our, our we're not thinking anything. I mean, that's the I yeah, think yeah. just a lot know, of nothing. There's no thought going on. Exactly. Once you get into that like zone usual. where you're playing at that kind of intensity, your thinking totally just turns off, and you go into kind of animal berserker mode really where mm-hmm. you're totally reactive and that's why a lot of times before the show we're telling ourselves okay we're not going to break the guitars this time we're not going to wreck the instruments in this and inevitably it turns out to be you know 10 times more destruction than what we would have you know because again we're not thinking when we're in that in that mode particularly you aren't <laughs> thinking. i mean my brain yeah. shuts off too but yeah. Uh, yeah well i think if we look at the uh, catalog of destroyed guitars you're pretty much up there as well, I, I know i know i know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, is there anything uh, else you'd like to uh, tell our listener? Oh, I have to say, 
broadcasting from Foothill College. This is KFJC, Los Altos Hills, little station ID. Uh, is there anything you'd like to tell our listeners? Just uh, Al- thank you for having us on. We're very happy to be here. We love KFJC. I mean, we're up in yeah. San Francisco, so we listen to KUSF a lot. But KJ, uh, KFJC is you know, a station we listen to a lot. We love your show. We like a lot of the shows here, so we're very happy to be here, of course. Yeah. We have one last cassette tape at Aquarius Records, so if you're in San Francisco, you should buy that one tape. Yeah, exactly. That's all there is. And right. I, I believe that there is a nuclear death wish tape here, or you guys have burned it onto CDR, so people mm-hmm. want to call up and request. We're all for <laughs> trying to crash the top ten at KFJC. Yeah, I and think- also, I want to plug it one more time. Tonight, Bay Area 51. Or HEMA. 730 <laughs> sharp. Yeah, now... Yeah, it should be good. Now, Cactus, you have a show on KUSF. Yeah. yeah, it's true. I'm on every Friday night from 3 in the morning until 8 in the morning on Saturday, and that show's called Defeat Sleep. It's KUSF 90.3 FM or KUSF.org, mm-hmm. and I'm on every Friday night. Mostly I play noise, although a lot of like live scanner feeds, I like to play the SFPD scanner, uh, and also a lot of old-time radio shows, uh, we like to play that. So we mix it up, but it's mostly noise and kind of ambient kind of stuff, I guess. Yeah, now, um, so you were up all night. No, tonight I got a sub, super sub Brian Chandler, subbed oh. and uh, sat in on Defeat Sleep, and I think he did a whole Captain Beefheart kind of a tribute, so yeah, should well, be good. Yeah, that should be good in the archives. Will, yes. Will be up, so um, this I why, know. This is why you were doing all the talking, because you're the DJ. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm usually yeah. sleeping at this time, but uh, now I'm pretty wired, so that's yeah. why I'm, I'm hogging the interview. Yeah, that's okay. Um, okay, well, thank you very, very much for stopping by. Well, thanks, thank you. Cousin Mary. Thank oh, you so much. It, it was definitely my... your sound guy, I forget his name right now, but he was awesome. Morris Minor. He is Morris Minor, a genius of acoustics. Yeah, he is. He it is. sounds like he's also a genius of the organ. We had a, we had a chat with him about his <laughs> organ collection, and uh, Doug and him were going to town comparing notes. Well, yeah, yeah. You know how it is with uh, music people and radio people. Yeah. They have these strange uh, enthusiasms. Yes, that's <laughs> true. If I wore glasses, there'd be tape on the nose. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I... I have to get some on mine. Okay, well, thanks for stopping by. All right, thanks again. Thank you. I think I'm going to play some more from this wonderful KLV recording. They are a Finnish metal band. Good job, DJ Cactus. And I will, um, I will turn off the mic so that we'll stop hearing all the springs twanging around. You'll think the reverb hour is starting. I'm going to start playing surf a little early today at 1:30. I'm going to play uh, do a, a freak week little extravaganza i'm going to play i picked a a song i like i'm going to play all seven recordings we have then i'm going to play some rare and live recordings that phil dirt um famous and infamous kfjc surf yeah a hero to many of us uh um that he gave me he gave me some copies of some rare recordings and i'm going to play those after uh, after that so right now, let's listen to a little more KLV 89.7 KF.